everyone, this is Emma and the online video course Piano Well. Today I decided to talk to you about correct tone production, this essential way of playing that brings freedom and ease to our technique. Um, so let's talk about which uh, aspects of playing relates to correct tone production and how to develop them. Um, so, uh, first of all, the pianist play, pianist plays with free and loose hands, there is uh, the energy doesn't stop in shoulders or upper arms or forearms or wrists and freely flows to the instrument through arms. And even though he plays with loose hands, his fingers are very smart and um, strong and all the energy is in the palm, uh, in the hand and finger muscles. Uh, the wrist um, doesn't get fatigue, it, it's not stiffed and it's very flexible and melodious and, f and free. And fingertips are very tenacious that again allows to, uh, that again lets, let pianists play with loose hands. So how we can achieve this technique? Apparently if you were asked to just relax your hands and um, feel your fingertips, relax your wrist and exert your fingers more, that wouldn't work at all because if you relax your hands, your fingers will become soft. If you try to exert your fingers, uh, your hands will get stiff. If you try to uh, relax your wrist, you couldn't play in fast tempos and, um, well, you have no idea how to feel fingertips as well. <laughs> so. Um, the only way how we can achieve this technique is through sound imagination and correct way of expressing, conveying our ideas on the instrument using correct way of playing, correct movements. Uh, you know, there's one thing you need to understand. Um, you cannot master this technique by simply copying and imitating movements that our teachers show us. Because there is thousand types of sensation inside our muscles, inside our hands, that we can feel while doing the same movements outside. And the only way to control those very tiny but very significant sensations is through our mind. So the key here is to connect sound imagination and um, movements of our hands to musical idea, to music that is written in the score. And um, everything we need to imagine is written in the score. We don't need actually to invent anything. Just be very careful to see and hear every note, every nuance that is already written. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and let's see how we can start. So let's start with simple imagining uh, notes that are written in the score. This ability uh, to imagine notes, to create sound in our mind, um, activates fingertips and make them be tenacious and lively and smart uh, that let us play with relaxed hands. Um, if we don't have these uh, fingertips, then every time we try to relax our hands, we will flip down from the keyboard. If we don't have anything, okay, let me <laughs> remember how it feels. Um, yeah, so with tenacious fingertips, we can just do like this. And we can relax our hands, and this one is going to be very, very, very strong. So, you see this one? <laughs> uh, most of students usually uh, tense their hand and play with relaxed fingertips and relaxed fingers, like, like this, something like that. So, yeah, this is one of the aspects of correct sound production. So anyway, um, when we imagine sound in our head, it brings some impulse, some energy to our fingertips, and this is how our fingertips become tenacious. And actually it's a very creative moment because you can arrange all the music in your head, we, you can use any timbres you want to color all the notes. Um, of course I prefer to use strings and choir and uh, vocal voice timbres, 
to arrange the music just because uh, I got used to this sound. It's very easy for me to remember this sound and to create something in my head using these uh, timbers. So uh, this is one thing. Another thing, if we look at the score again very careful, we can see the melody pattern, like all these waves it goes up and down if we connect notes. And this one we're going to use to imagine sound in movements. And because on the piano we don't have up down, up means to the right and down means to the left, we're going to stretch our sound to the right and to the left. So if I sing it, it's going to be this way. And uh, it's very funny because now we learn to imagine not just, you know, like color spot, but imagine sound in the time, in the um, in the space, in movements, and uh, if you can do this, then then you may start to merging movements of notes, feel how movement of one note gradually flows to the movement of another note. So if you sing two notes. It's gonna be this way, like with little glissando. And if you, if you're able to imagine this in your head, then you just one step away from uh, playing, uh, from mastering good legato technique. So all we need to do is just convey your ideas on the instrument using correct movements. So this is the time when we need to talk about our wrist. We need our wrist to express this sound movement and uh, to to move wrist to the direction of the movement of the sound. Um, if we imagine note to the right, and we move our wrist to the right, to the left, to the left. Elbow stays in place. And no lifting, no dropping. Everything on the same level. <clears throat> and so when we imagine sound movement, that brings energy to our wrist and makes it be uh, flexible and free and melodious again inside, you know. If you just do these movements without any um, idea of the sound, it's, it's just stupid, you know. This movement doesn't express anything. And you can again, like I said before, you can just imitate my movement, but if inside muscles are not working in the correct way, like I said, uh, there could be millions type of sensation inside. Your wrist that will not help. Your wrist will still will be, your wrist will be still stiffed. You have to understand that all the movements we, we do is just to express what is in our head. Um, so <laughs> one more thing I I need to add here. Uh, we need to choose the uh, the nose where we're gonna move our elbow to prepare a new position because if we don't use our elbow then the wrist uh, that we will start to twist our wrist and that will bring um, excessive tension to it like for example in scales this is one position another position if we do not move our wrist over here then this is what's gonna happen And um, most important, elbow stops leading your wrist. Wrist, uh, elbow start uh, following your wrist, which is completely wrong. Elbow always leads the wrist. Elbow always leads the hand. And back. So it's very important. <laughs> um, so we just talk about how to develop flexible wrist and how to uh, develop our tenacious fingertips. So I hope it's quite clear. <laughs> and uh, if you really want to master this technique, then just um, watch le lessons of this course, lesson number one and two explains this very well. And just read the book and do assignments from that book. 
Uh, so now let's talk about how to eliminate stiffness in our arms while playing and how to make muscles of our fingers uh, strong and smart and flexible again, you know, not just dead muscles. <laughs> Our hands and finger muscles are directly connected to our voice, the way we internally sing notes while playing, so-called uh, in intoning, intonating music. And therefore, we can only control muscles of our fingers through singing. And you know, there is no single pianist who couldn't sing well. And if you're a teacher, you probably also know that a student who can sing better can play better, and the other way around. So the essence of singing is to feel distance between notes and different distance is given different names uh, as we know unison, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, octave. So the only way to feel this distance is to pass it with resistance and hard work. Uh, like you singing, you know, in the water. You know, every movement is a little bit slower because we have resistance of the water. So if we sing the same notes with good intonation, it will sound this way. And if our fingers are following this intonation, they start feel this distance between notes and they start exerting before touching a key because they prefer the distance of the interval they're going to intonate. And this is how we control finger muscles that are, by the way, in the palm of our hand, not over here. So our fingers are following our mind and not the other way around. So if I'm, for example, um, playing this interval while singing it, While I'm making this glissando with my voice, again in my head, uh, my finger, you know, like sing together with me. He feels this tension, this little tension, and that's why he started exerting. And as you can see, I start controlling fingers muscles over here so I don't have to lift my finger uh, because simply everything that is happening is happening in this place in my palm so this is how we can control our fingers and make them being uh, intelligent you know <laughs> So, um, also, this intonation technique is an open gate for us to start passing weight to the instrument through our body and arms. Um, okay, let me explain this. Weight is the only way for us to feel free energy while playing. Without weight, everything we do, everything we feel, everything we play will be just uh, dead, will be flat. There is no life in it. There is no breath in it. And um, unfortunately, it's not just, it's not enough to just tune into this feeling. You have to find a way how to maintain it while playing. And the only way to do this is through intonation, through our singing. Um, if we just, okay, if we just get our weight, you know, and we, okay, we're ready, <laughs> and then we just start playing, but there is nothing over here, then this way that we feel here, that we feel everywhere, it will just f fade away while playing. So, uh, but when you express it, when you connect it, when you connect it to intonation and you express this feeling of free energy through intonation, then this is how you can maintain it while playing. So if I sing with weight, vibrates differently and it brings uh, it, my, my voice even changed right now <laughs> it brings free energy to every part of our body so we can
can play with good, beautiful sound, our hands will never get stiffed, you know, and also our wrists will never get stiffed, you know. I'm sorry for this stupid melody, it's just all, all that in my head right now. But, um, so, yeah, this is the way how you maintain feeling of free energy while playing. And if you really master this intonation and way technique, um, that will allow you to feel this freedom of natural breath between notes. And this is what brings uh, free energy to all your body and to your hands. Um, so, yeah, guys, if we, uh, if we try to explain how to... Uh, develop this correct tone production that is basic of um, of master of master technique, you know, of virtuosic technique, which is true, you know. Without this, you can play like for hours, for hours, and uh, you can never improve your technique because you will have some problems that you cannot overcome, you know. Like I have stiffness over here, my hands get fatigued. Um, the quality of sound is not good, you know, when I play fast, my fingers are not even, um, what else? All, all kind of, all kind of mistakes that a uh, student can possibly make. You cannot, you know, so you have to, have to develop this correct connection with your brain, with your body, to the instrument, to the music that is written in the score. So yeah, coming back, if we try to explain how to develop correct tone production, we can explain it in four formulas, basically. First, imagine all the notes that are written in the score. Second, imagine uh, movement patterns that, is, that are in the score, that is written in the score, and are uh, integrated with wrist movement that copies the same pattern and choose the right notes to move your elbow to prepare a new position to keep your wrist free. Third, make good intonation when you feel distance between notes and let your fingers follow this intonation. And fourth, pass weight through all your body, through all your arms and maintain this feeling of free energy while playing uh, by expressing it through intonation. Um, so, one more time, um, all this information you can find in my uh, videos, lesson number one, two, and three. I explain it fully. And uh, if you download my book for free training book, um, there are some lessons and assignments that are created um, in a very simple way for you to understand and to develop this technique. Everything that I just talked about here. Um, so... Yeah, I hope guys you can find it very helpful for you and I really encourage you to just at least try it. <laughs> and thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.